music's real low. All right, hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money to the beast on your mind or in your hand. That music started out kind of slow. I just kind of spacing around here. Kind of a funny night with all the lightning around and everything. <clears throat> okay, now here's what it says in the Bible. That's not translated correctly. That's right, in the apocalypse. Uh-oh, it's a matter of things not backing out. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I'll turn it down a little bit. Oh, that's some old Rolling Stones. Satanic Majesty's Request. No one by just sells out the money of the beast on your mind in your hand. And then the word is karagma that's not translated correctly. There it is right there. Greek word karagma. Impress on the coin. Hence stamp money coin. And these people, Plutarch, Plutarch and Antipater Thessalonius, were writers at about the time that the New Testament was written. So you can see the context of the word. It changes over the centuries, like this goes to the 4th century A.D. And then like, uh, I don't know how far back this goes. But anyway, that's what it is. It's the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. All right, so let's see what's going on in the world today. Oh yeah, I got a new book by a person who lives in Tucson. One of them does. And he was like at the university hospital here, University of Arizona. He was like a forensics med medical uh, professor there. And he taught the interns, I guess, like forensics. And he used to be a judge. He was the president of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. And he lives here in Tucson. I want to get him on the show. I noticed that his... Uh, He's got his phone number in the phone book. But, uh, it's called An Open and Shut Case by Robert Joling. And he's the one who used to teach at the University of Arizona Medical Center. And this Philip von Prague is uh, like a forensic scientist. And he he's like totally knows everything about tape recordings and things like that. He worked as a technical manager and vice president of a bunch of different companies. I think he worked for Hewlett Packard or someplace like that. Let's see where it is here. Oh, uh, information technology, IT. Well, anyway, so these people, they examined the... There was like a news reporter who had his tape recorder on the whole time when Robert Kennedy finished his speech in the ballroom in Los Angeles in 68, 1968, and he was going to go on to uh, someplace else after that. And they were putting him through the pantry, and uh, as the, that was his exit out there. And the newspaper or television reporter had his tape recorder on. So like when uh, Saran Saran started shooting his gun around, um, they recorded how many bullets. You could hear the pop, pop, pop on there. So and there's a lot more to it than that. Like Saran Saran's gun only had eight shots, but they they found nine bullets in people that day. So I mean, there was obviously a second gun. Not only that, but there were a bunch of bullet holes in like the walls and the ceiling panels, and a bunch of other things like that. And uh, the LA Police Department destroyed a lot of the evidence. It's my theory, as well as this other book here called The Assassination of Robert Kennedy. This is a really good book here. It, uh, it's easier reading than the one I just showed you. But uh, this is really a fascinating book because it's like just, just about everybody says, uh, oh dear, some of, these, some of these songs are recorded louder. I hope it's not screwing up the sound in there. I think I'll turn it down a little bit. I don't know. I got my iPod on automatic now. Let's see what this is. Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> All right. I better turn it down or change this. I'll change it. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, yeah. Now, all the psychiatrists that examined Saran Saran 
realize that he he's one of these kind of people that's very easy to hypnotize. I'm one of these people too. I can be hypnotized just like that. But I'm usually aware that they're trying to do it and I don't let them do it to me. But uh, So Saran Saran was creating a diversion and nobody ever saw him get close enough. There's no doubt that the fatal shot was like fired really close to him. And uh, so they had to get rid of Robert Kennedy. They had to get rid of him because if he was going to become president, he would have gotten to the bottom of the Kennedy assassination. And uh, so they had to uh, kill him. And it was ever since they killed President John F. Kennedy that things in this country have gotten really bad. It's like Eisenhower warned of the military-industrial complex, and uh, that's what's uh, going on now. You know, we've got Halliburton making all this money in Iraq, and it was Brown and Root and all these other companies for the Vietnam War. Oh gosh, I think I'm just going to turn this music off and try to, I'm just going to talk. I'm just not going to get distracted with this music. But like, um, there's been a lot of these kind of conspiracies. They killed Martin Luther King, that was another setup. James Earl Ray was another one who has a, a little bit to do with hypnosis. It's kind of funny because and this the House Select Committee on Assassinations in 79 brought this up that uh, that um, James Earl Ray visited like one of these hypnotists in Los, Los Angeles and uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was a patsy. So we have a lot of different conspiracies like uh, the USS Liberty that uh, Israel deliberately tried to sink. That's uh, And John McCain's dad was one of the people that that served uh, to cover that up. And John McCain's dad was like an admiral in the uh, in the Navy and over there. And so, like uh, Israel deliberately attacked this boat and they killed 294 crew members. Well, they were uh, there were 294 crew members on the boat. On the boat, 34 were killed and 171 wounded. And the, the Israelis deliberately tried to sink this boat, and this happened, you know, just around the same time that that Robert Kennedy was killed too. You know, maybe he would have done something about that. I don't know, but uh, the country has gotten really messed up since then. There's been so many kind of conspiracies and ripoffs, like this housing bubble was a big ripoff. They got all these people to buy these houses, and then they sold the loans. The Wall Street like packaged all these loans and sold them to a whole bunch of different companies, and and uh, so they made a bunch of money off of that. It's all all the problems in the world are caused by money, and there's been a lot of famous people that have said that. It's, um, I've got like the Gospel of Eliminating Money on my website that you can check out. There's a lot of famous people. You know, Jesus Christ believed in eliminating money. He told his disciples to not carry any gold or brass or silver in their purses when they went out. And Jesus Christ said, you can't serve God or mammon. You'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. But the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and scoffed. And that's in the book of Luke. And the whole problem with the Bible is because of this guy, St. Paul. And he's antichrist because he's illogical. A lot of the things he says aren't very logical. You know, he tells, you know, he says that the woman must kiss the man's butt and stuff like this, and he, she should be subservient to him and uh, cover her head in church and all this and that. You know, I mean, I don't even believe you need to go to church. Most of the churches today don't really have any very good sermons. They, you know, in order to get like tax-free status, you can't really say anything political in the church. And like, um, I think de Tocqueville, he was one of Governor Meekham's favorite characters. And he, Governor Meekham used to like get teary-eyed when he'd recite um, de Tocqueville talking about the churches, how they used to be like, you know, against the king and stuff, I guess. I don't know, but he, de Tocqueville was really impressed with, with our churches here. So anyway, we're going to try to get this, uh, maybe we can get him on the show, uh, Robert Joling. He's, he's got like impeccable credentials, and there's a forward in the book by Robert Vaughn. Uh, I don't remember, know if you remember him, from the man from UNCLE, 
but like uh, he was one of Robert Kennedy's friends, and uh, they, uh, they they destroyed the evidence. The LA police uh, destroyed a lot of the evidence, but they have. Uh, it's just a ridiculous, crazy thing what they got away with. It's same with this 9-11 thing that's, that, that they did. It's another Pearl Harbor. 9-11, Pearl Harbor was a setup. You know, we, we were, the United States had like oil embargo against Japan and we f f maneuvered them. This is what Henry Stimson wrote in his diary that, that, you know, we must maneuver Japan into firing the first shot in order to get us into this war. So 9-11 was like a Pearl Harbor to get us involved in this war, and uh, they, they were like, it's like um, they had uh, explosions in there that brought those buildings down. There's like a fire, and the damage that that airplane caused wasn't enough to really bring those buildings down. There's, they, they found like molten metal in the basement, and there's a, a good book about this by uh, David Ray Griffin. Uh, it's called uh, Debunking 9-11 Debunkers. And he goes over the popular mechanics critique of, uh, of uh, these people that don't believe that, uh, that an airplane brought that down. It was a controlled demolition. And if you look at like um, the Pentagon too, it's like there was a big hole in there that was like perfectly round and there was no airplane debris there was like a big smoke screen in, in front of it to hide, kind of hide what things were doing. Some people say they saw airplanes there, like it could have flown overhead, it, you know, it could have just gone over the top and I believe maybe it was, a, they were, I can't, you know, I, th there weren't really that many witnesses for one thing. That's the main thing that, um, that seems a little troubling, you know, what did these people really see, but like, there was no debris there in front of the building. It's just um, one thing after another, you know, and, and uh, all the lies that are going on. It's just really bad karma. And so, like, uh, the president of the Soviet Union was saying that America has no position to really say anything right now because we're, like, in a depression. He says that the American economy is in a depression. They had this. G8 meeting over there. Where is this? It's really an interesting article. Oh yes, here it is. I really underlined a lot of it. This guy, Medved, he's the new president over there. Look, take a look at his picture here. He looks like a real serious man. He took over from Putin, but he says that the United States is in a depression, so that you know we really don't have. Uh, it, it's, uh, we're not in any position to lecture other countries on how to conduct their affairs. And then Mr. Medved brushed aside American criticism, criticism of his country's record on democracy and human rights. I mean, he knows that the, there's no democracy over here, that the CIA killed Kennedy, and, and that we've been operating under some crazy, crazy kind of a thing for so long that, um, and, and the karma is so bad, you know. Same with the state called Israel. The karma is really bad over there. Oh well. Anyway, I got a new hearing on my uh, this thing that they're trying to steal my property from me. This, um, I think this guy's a Jewish lawyer. I mean, I'm not really too sure, but he could he changed his name. He doesn't have a Jewish sounding name, but then again, maybe it is. It's called, his name is Charles H. Whitehill. And I, I, he's, I really, he's trying to steal my property. I don't know why, if they're going to be building, uh, it's right next to the freeway, so I don't know if it's, you know, valuable. Maybe, maybe the federal government is going to buy these properties. I don't know if they're going to widen, uh, the freeway through town or not, the location of the property is 708 East 39th Street, and I have a hearing September 9th, and I filed three motions for sanctions against this attorney because he keeps um, making these false allegations. It's all a matter of whether or not I did due diligence in trying to find the heirs, and like I've done 
Oh, more than, I've gotten more than like 250 properties through tax lien foreclosures. And I've been to court about 20, 30 times, you know, and I've done the same thing every time. It's uh, called due diligence. And um, you're trying to find the owner of the property. So there's certain things you have to do in order to uh, do your uh, diligence to try to find these people. And so what I usually do is I uh, first check the records at the assessor, you know, and I check the records at the, and I'll mail a letter to them. This is what the statute says you have to do. So you mail them a letter. And then if the letter comes back, I'll uh, do some internet searches on like the AT&T telephone site and the Yahoo people search and I'll try to find these people there and I'll try calling them first and make sure that they're the right people and then I'll also look in the records down at the recorder's office and stuff like that and I've been doing this for so long I never had a problem until right until now and this guy's saying I could have found the heirs through these old city liens that the city had. There used to be a house on this property, so the city uh, demolished it and put a lien on the house like 10 years ago. So like uh, there was no address on the, on the recorded documents. So I kind of ignored them since they were so old. But this lawyer saying that if I would have uh, contacted the city, I could have found the heirs. But, uh, you know, I didn't know that at the time. But, so I did call up the city, and, and the city told me that they don't have any records of, you know, the heirs. So essentially this attorney told an untruth. I don't know how else to say it. He, uh, it's a material, um, um, uh, he perpetrated a material fraud in the court. That's what it is because uh, he knows the truth now, and yet he's not correcting himself. He's not uh, denying what I said, you know. But uh, anyway, we're going to have a hearing on this. It was a very strange hearing the first time. It's like, like really weird, you know. How can they get away with this? And the lawyer was being so friendly to the, all the clerks in there and everything. I just really wonder if this attorney is ripping off the heirs, you know. I don't know. I mean, why didn't these people file a death certificate, you know, 10 years ago? The woman died in 2001, you know. Why didn't they file that? They should have, and then they should have um, probated the thing and, and started paying the taxes on it. If, they, if these people would have, you know, just filed that... Um, death certificate, they could have gotten the uh, tax bill in her name because her name was on the, the death certificate. But these people didn't really know what to do and they ended up losing their property to me because they didn't pay their taxes on it. Well, anyway, let's see what else is going on in the world worth talking about. Not much. Maybe I'll take some phone calls. I'll take some phone calls. I'll put the numbers up. Let's see if the numbers go up. I don't really have much to say. It's been a really hard week. I had to go up to Eloy. Eloy, Arizona. It's about 65 miles from here. And uh, clean up a vacant lot. The woman told me it got some, some dump. Somebody dumped some stuff there. I think it was the neighbor thinking that the city was going to pick it up. But So anyway, I told her, why don't you send me an email so I can see how much it is, you know, and so I'll know how big of a truck to rent, you know, and... Uh, Anyway, she said she sent the emails, but I never got them. And then I just called her back and said, well, how much is it, you know, can it fit in a pickup? And she said, okay, so I got one of these trailers, you know, U-Haul trailer, and went up there. Turns out that all this junk was on my neighbor's lot. It wasn't on mine. My lot is like 50 feet away from there. Maybe 5% of it was on there. So I ended up picking up the garbage anyway, and... Uh, and taking it to the dump out there. But I had to get up like real early in the morning, you know, because I didn't, it was so hot. I got up there 
got up there like 7.30 in the morning and I called her, you know, I mean, she wasn't there. She doesn't get to work till 8 o'clock, you know. I was going to call her up and show her that this is not my property. But, and she finally did call me back, but like I was already home. And uh, she said, well, I could have gotten the people to pick it up, but I told her, no, I did you a favor. I went up there and did it anyway. I got to look at some of the other vacant lots I have up there. All right, we got some phone calls. Let's see. I don't know which ones I have. Let's see, I've got 683 and 792. I've got those two numbers. Oh, I don't know if I have all the numbers or not. Hello? Hello? Hello, Spaniel? Yeah, hi, what's up? Hello, Spaniel? Oh. Hello, Spaniel? I don't speak Spanish. I think he's speaking Spanish. Anyway, I tell you, it's been pretty weird. It gets weirder and weirder. One thing good, though, is like uh, the price of oil's gone down. Here's an interesting article. This woman is trying to get these um, papers released about the Kennedy assassination, and uh, it's just incredible, all this stuff going on, you know? It's like they had an infiltrator and uh, he was like an FBI uh, infiltrator into the mafia. And apparently he was uh, infiltrating with, uh, oh, what's that guy's name, uh, Marciano, uh, Marcelo, Marcelo in New Orleans. Uh, just uh, so much evidence. You know, Jack Ruby was a um, gangster and he ended up having to kill Lee Harvey Oswald I think what was supposed to happen was uh, he, I don't know, he got away from there. He, he got away and I think that Officer Tippett was supposed to kill uh, kill, uh, kill Lee Harvey Oswald, but he didn't. Lee Harvey Oswald got him first, so, so he got away with it. Okay, we got another phone call. Hello? 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 Hi, what's up? Uh, so, um, I'm hearing that you're so upset about that property deal. Yeah, I'm trying to get this pro. They're trying to steal it from me. Uh, they haven't settled it yet? No, they're, I'm still fighting them, you know. Um, they, uh, I've got another hearing on it. And I'll, I'll take it to, you know, I'm kind of worried. Like, if I do go to appeal it, you know, the the appellate court can just ignore it, you know, and then what am I going to do, you know? It's like, it's pretty scary. I guess I what could... If, what if you just forgot about it and say, well, it's just a lock, chalk it up as a lock? Well, I mean, I, I've got like $5,000 invested in it. I'm not, apparently I won't lose any money on it, but it's just the principle of the thing, you know, I got this thing fair and square, and uh -huh. and he's trying to steal it from me. Plus, you know, I mean... I can make a big profit on it. I paid like five thousand for it, and I'm sure I could probably get thirty thousand for it, maybe even more. I don't know. Do you think it's the judge that is it the judge or the lawyer that? Well, to... both. You know, I think the judge probably didn't think I was very smart. You know, and that it, I think the judge just, you know, I don't know. I think you really have to listen to the transcript. I I didn't order it yet, but it was kind of funny because the judge mentioned in open court that he knows about my name change, you know, and, uh... He, he knows that you're male? Yeah, female? well, I was, you know, I had a sex change, but, but he mentioned that in open court, and then not only that, but he, um, said something else that was kind of weird, but, uh, so anyway, he, uh... But that has nothing to do with it. Well, I know, I know, it's just, oh yeah, not only that, but he knew me from before, you know, and he, he doesn't like it that I name my company. My company's name is 666 is Money LC. He didn't, oh. I used to, you know, I used to name the, as one of the plaintiffs, you know, I, I dropped it from this caption here though. But I used, I usually file a complaint in my name and my company's name. And he uh -huh. didn't, he didn't like it that I do that because I'm not an attorney, so I'm not supposed to be able to represent my own company. Oh, see, so are you representing yourself then? Well, I am now, yeah. I changed the property back into my name only now. Oh, I see. And I think the, the judge was trying to tell me to get a lawyer, you know, because uh -huh. uh, he knew I was getting screwed. 
I think I can't really tell what his motive is or what he was trying to do, but but anyway, um, he gave me a new trial, and and so I've got another judge now named Cornelio. I've never had her before, but I've so seen. Are you, you going to get legal legal counsel? No, no, I think I can handle it. But like I've seen how these judges screw people over. There used to be an, a judge named Alice Fisher, and she used to do the probate things. And this poor girl once called me up. She'd seen my show or something, and she called me up and told me what was going on in court. So I looked into it myself, and I could see that they were, like, trying to steal this girl's property. It was her inheritance. And oh, wow. uh, she had, like, a bunch of acres on Irvington there, which is, you know, a major thoroughfare. And the whole family was kind of, like, fighting over it, and uh, the lawyers were just dragging it on and stuff like that. And... It was really a nightmare for her. I don't ever know what happened, but I've seen this stuff happen, you know. It's, um, but anyway, I hope for the best, and, uh... Yeah, but the courts will do that. They'll drag everything on and on. Uh-huh. You know? Hopefully he won't drag on for Christmas until yeah. Christmas. Well, he knows, this lawyer knows that I think he's unethical. He, I called him on the phone because I didn't know what time the hearing was supposed to be. So, um... He says, I know you think I'm unethical. And I says, well, yeah, you know. I mean, if uh, if I made a mistake, I'd correct it. You know, I don't think this guy has any argument at all. He just brought this stuff up thinking he could get away with it. You know, it's like he also says that I could have found the names of the heirs through a death certificate. But I didn't know this person died. There was no evidence that they died. <sighs> I mean, uh, you know, I mean... There's no database for people who have died. I called up today to find out. You know, I called up the vital statistics, and they says, no, we don't have a database of people who died. So I don't know how I could have ever thought that they could have been dead, you know. Sometimes I have to foreclose against, like, three different people at the same time, because, um, and I have to find all three of them. So it's just like, you know, you can't really do all this. You can't really, you know, you, it's like, how can you tell if there's a death certificate? You can't really apply for every single one to see if they're dead or not. You know, it costs money to see if these people are dead. You have to file a, a claim or something. I don't know. So anyway, there must be, like, rules for due diligence. That's what it's called. And um, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. I have over 250 properties I got in Pima and Pinal counties. And I've gone to court like 30 times. And each time I swear to the judge that I check the records of the Pima County recorder, the assessor, the treasurer. I check two internet search engines. And I check the local phone book to try to find these people. And I wasn't able to. That's what I tell the judge. And they says, okay, I find you, uh, that you did your due diligence and the property is yours now. So it's really, you know, it's really a sad and scary thing that that a lawyer would try to do this in court to me, you know. It's like, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe this property is worth a lot of money or something or, or he's just being mean to me. I don't know what it is. I have no idea, but it's really scary. It's a waste of my time. You know, I have to type these papers up and go down there, and then I have to appear in court, and then I have to worry about it, too, you know. He he threatened to sue me for libel or slander because, um, well, I, you're not supposed to call people liars, but technically that's uh, basically... See, there's different kinds of lies, you know, there's uh, different kinds of perjury, and there's like uh, the knowing and intentionally, which is the worst. And, I mean, at first, you know, you could say maybe this guy was just lazy in his research, and he thought that I could have found out the name of the heirs through these city liens. But, you know, now that I've done the research and proved that there aren't, uh, that there are no records of who these people were that uh, he needs to retract what he said, you know, but he hasn't done that. 
And I'm kind of afraid that maybe he might bribe one of these people and get a fake affidavit or something, you know, and forge a paper, you know, who knows what he's going to do. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, I wrote the phone numbers down, I didn't bring them with me. I was going to suggest that you call up the city and try to find the name of this person. The, the, but they didn't. Uh, I talked to one of the people there and he said that that those re releases were probably filed by the title company. The title company asked for them, and then af after 10 years, the lien expires anyway. So most of the time, when they have a city lien, the city will put the uh, well, the city will put the owner of record's name on there, and that's the person I have to find is the owner of record. And so, like, um, there wasn't any owner of record anywhere to be found. All right, let's let's take a pic. Let's take a look at this here. This is uh, oh gosh, uh, pa Paris Hilton. Look at this. she pulls out like there must be like ten thousand hundred dollar ten thousand dollars there. Looks like she's in a drugstore or something. Pulls out a wad of a hundred dollar bills. <laughs> all right, let's see. I think we got all these phone calls. Hello, hello. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hello? Yeah, what's up? Uh, listen, uh, this is the first time I've seen your show. Oh. Um, I've seen it I've seen it advertised a lot, but I've never actually oh. watched it. Really? Your your web address there, your six 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 is money dot com. Is it possible to uh communicate with you on that? I'm not much of a, a, a computer person. Oh. Is it possible to send you a message on that? Oh yeah, website. sure. Yeah, I have my mailing address and an email on there too. Oh, cool. Okay. All right, thanks. And what's your name? My name is Raquel. Raquel. Raquel? Yeah, Raquel oh, Barron. Name. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I like your right. show. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah, here you go. Look, I'll show you this court case I filed. Here's, here's the numbers of it. You can go down there and look at it. And uh, well, well, there's my phone number too. But I don't really like to get phone calls. So I had the uh, county treasurer in there, and uh, there's the number. And this is my motion to, uh, of opposition to, the, to dismiss it. And then here's, here's my third motion for sanctions against this person. You know, it's like, I mean, I don't... I mean, this guy should just back off and leave me alone. You know, he's, he, he's, he's, I did my job, you know, and he should, shouldn't try to steal this property from me. It's not his. I got it fair and square. And I don't know why he wants it so bad. Oh, well, anyway, let's see what else is going on. Oh, well, I don't really have much to say. Let's see, we got another phone call. Hello? 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 Goodbye. Not very many people calling today. I guess, I guess it's just a nice night to sit at home with the lightning out there and everything. Well, let's, see, uh, let's see what we got here. I got some pictures to show. I don't know if you've seen these or not. Here's the uh, Mount Lemon Lookout. Went up there the other day with a friend of mine. Or did I go alone? I don't remember. I think I went alone. That's up there too. Here's here's Tucson. You can see the lights down there. I know these trees are dead because of uh, fire. We had a big fire up there. And uh, that's at the Coachella Festival. This girl's got some kind of bloody nose or something. They let this. This was like at the Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd played like the whole Dark Side of the Moon album, and then they let this pig up, and it says like Obama on the bottom there, and the pig drifted away, but uh, and it landed in somebody's backyard, and they they were going to give these people a reward. I think they gave them like a ten thousand dollar reward for bringing the pig back, and then they gave them like two life passes to each Coachella festival. But uh, I don't know what they did with those, and they and the people gave the money to charity. Okay, 
Let's see. Now this is over at uh, Oh Delmar and Delmar at Torrey Pines State Park. I don't know that guy was in there. Oh, they were opening up the channel and back. And so he was like taking sand and putting it in there. That's the Crystal Pier in San Diego. People, you can stay in these little houses here. Here's a nude guy, I won't show you. A nude guy, he came up to me and uh, he had a girlfriend with him and I guess he was just curious about me. At sunset at Black's Beach. Here's where I like to park my car. There's my car right there. And uh, there's a cop car right there. But you walk down this beach, and that's where the nude beach is, way down there. They got a hot spring. This is like in between uh, Tucson and San Diego. It, you can swim in here. That's like fresh water. But then they have a hot spring. But this hot spring was so hot that uh, you'd burn your foot if you went in there. It's a friend of mine. Her name is uh, Vanessa. And uh, here's a, another friend. It's not that good of a picture, but uh, that's Valerie, Valerie and Vanessa. What else do we got here? Got a nude picture of me. This is uh, Melissa. Melissa. She looks a lot like Marilyn Monroe. And that's Skittles. Skittles was on my show a couple of weeks ago. Skittles and Blossom. That's, that's Valerie. Valerie in my friend's car. That's uh, my friend Jennifer. A clump of aspen up on Mount Lemon. The sun was shining right in there. And it was like these some kind of flies or some kind of ants. Some kind of ants or something flew right in my face. Uh, <clears throat> pine cones. <clears throat> That's a Mexican bird of paradise. There's my friend Jennifer. I bought this skirt, but I didn't like the way it fit, so I had to take it back. Let her try it on, though. That's at the Coachella Festival. They had this same truck over at uh, <clears throat> over at uh, Burning Man Festival. I think they had this at the Burning Man Festival too. And then here we have. Uh, this was the, uh, they had like a play at the Coachella Festival. It's kind of weird. It was really a trip. Ah, oh, there's some more of them. This is uh, La Jolla, California. Yeah, another fool's paradise. It's called, uh, people would go swimming here. They'd go swim way out into the bay. That's Black's Beach. Black's Beach. Here's me at home. You can't see the whole thing. Me at home. There's a rattlesnake. That's on one of my vacant lots. I got that rattlesnake. There's me at home acting crazy. That's my friend Jennifer. That's Valerie again. Or Vanessa. That's Vanessa. There I am, there I am with Skittles and uh, Blossom. That's me again. <laughs> and Jennifer near that tree, near that clump of trees there. That's me at uh, Mount Lemon. I got a vacant lot up there. It's not that interesting. Let's see. There's my desk. I had a whole bunch of stuff on my desk that day. All right. That's about it. My friend Jennifer. What the heck, you know? I don't know. I don't know what to expect, you know? I mean, she's the way things are going, I don't know. It's just like, um, I don't know how much longer things can go on like this, you know? Like, with the global warming and the crazy weather and people losing their houses and things like that, you know? It's just, it shouldn't have to be this hard. It shouldn't have to be like this, you know, with modern machinery, it could have been really nice, you know, like some of these European countries are really nice. They have uh, trolleys everywhere and you can get around, but it's just so cold there, you know. I wouldn't want to live in, in Amsterdam. I wouldn't want to live in England either. It rains too much.
but uh, anyway, we just have to realize that that uh, a miracle can happen if people would realize what the real problem is. You know, there's money is a totally unnecessary thing. We've got bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, salesmen, sales clerks, all these people, insurance companies, and then you have these drug companies ripping everybody off. It's like uh, I think if people would take uh, M MDMA, if they would take ecstasy, oh, like once a week, you know, during the weekend, you know, just take a day off and, and take some ecstasy with your wife, you know, and spend the night in bed, and uh, that, you know, that's that's a wonderful thing. It's really nice. And it's like um, marijuana is pretty good stuff. You, know, you can grow it in your own home. It's just that it's illegal, you know. It's like it's so it's like uh with alcohol you know they they want the slaves to be productive and uh, you know they don't want you to miss your work and everything but really you know it doesn't really take that much work to provide for yourself you know modern machinery makes it pretty easy you know i used to make my own clothes it wasn't too hard it was fun it was creative and you feel real good doing it and uh, the whole problem is, you know, people just want to have babies all the time. And, and then, uh, you know, it's just like, that's the whole problem is the world population has gotten so big. And, that, and that's why there's supply and demand and, and we have pollution and all that. So, you know, I mean, like, why would anybody really want to bring any children into this world? It's just like... Uh, it gets worse and worse. I mean, where are your children going to play? You know, it's like the only people that really should have children are, you know, people that are either living on a farm somewhere or um, if you have a lot of money because, you know, it's like all these illegal aliens coming in here are driving the wages down. So, like, uh, you can't really make a living, you know. It's like when I was growing up, my mom didn't have to work, you know, my dad made enough money. And you could even make enough money as a garbage man back then and uh, take care of your family with that money. But now the wages are so low that um, two people have to work. And then, you know, you have these 30-year mortgages, which is a bunch of slavery. You got the sheetrock and two-by-four stuff, which is not very... Uh, you know, it's not very expensive. You can get two by fours on sheetrock real cheap. And you can put up a pretty good house yourself, you know. It doesn't it's not that hard to build a house. So, uh, you know, we've got this problem. They don't they don't discourage people from having babies because the more mouths the capitalists have to feed then the more uh, money you're gonna have to spend, you know, the more cars you're gonna have to buy. And these these rich people are just like kings and queens. And they, they all have their places to escape to, their private jets and stuff like that. They can escape to Argentina. That's probably, probably the safest place to go because they have a pretty self-sufficient economy there. And uh, I'm not so sure where they get their oil. They get their oil from Venezuela or what, but, you know, that that's a, a, another problem is like, running out of oil, you know, it's like uh, the workmen, the, the planners, they didn't really plan this very well. It's like it's all going to come crunching together and that's why we're over in Iraq is to try to steal that oil, you know, and uh, but it's hard, it's going to be hard to get it out of there. It's just one big nightmare, you know, we're so dependent on this oil. It's like that T. Boone Pickens says, you know, we really, really need to get off of this oil and start building electric cars and have windmills and stuff like that. And then then we have to put the brakes on the population, you know. It's just like you can't keep having all these babies, you know. I mean, what, what really good is it, you know, to have all these babies? Oh, well, anyway, I just don't know. I just... Um, don't have that much faith in anything anymore. It's just like, you know, unless a miracle happens, I don't know 
how much longer it can go on like this, you know. It's just like, um, we had the Great Depression before, but I don't think Americans are ready for it, you know. It's just like, what are they going to do with their time? You know, if they're going to be unemployed, what are they going to do with their time? Plus, we have all these guns out there, and there's just going to be more robberies and stuff. One of my friends was telling me that the Circle K down there, somewhere on the south side, they don't even let you in there at nighttime. You know, they have like a one-inch thick bulletproof glass, and you have to slide your order through a door, you know, and then... Uh, it's pretty scary how things have gotten. There was like a murder about, oh, half a mile from my house. In fact, one of my friends was staying in that hotel at the uh, roadway in there on Speedway and uh, near uh, Stone, on Stone there, just south of uh, that, that park there. And this is happening quite a lot. At least I don't hear gunshots anymore around my house, you know. That's one thing good. Fortunately, we had that city councilman uh, who lived over, back over where all the gunshots were. Uh, and uh, they owned that store on 4th Avenue, Piney Hollow. What was that guy's name? Oh, well, let me see. Let me put some music on. Let's put some music on. It's almost time to go home. It's been a hard, long week. So we'll just go home, listen to music, and kick back and watch the rain, you know. That's about all you can do. So anyway, 9-11 um, was a fraud. John McCain's dad's a liar. He covered up the uh, USS Liberty thing where Israel, Israel deliberately tried to sink this boat, man, you know. And if it wasn't for one of the radio men on there who got the word out, then they all would have ended up at the bottom of the sea. And then Israel would have blamed it on uh, Egypt. And then that would have gotten us involved in uh, that six-day war or whatever it was. Six-day war, yeah. USS Liberty. There was a man in Tucson, a doctor named Utz, U-T-Z. And he called me up. I once did a story on this. And he called me up and said, yeah, that was really good, you know. That's, uh, we didn't get any justice on that. And uh, he was the, one of the doctors on the ship, I guess. And uh, so he knew I was telling the truth. It's just so many lies out there. It's like Adolf Hitler said, the broad masses of a nation more readily fall victim to a big lie than to a small lie. And even when the facts are brought clearly before them, they will continue to doubt and waver, thinking there must be some other kind of explanation. Yeah, I tell you, I think the world would have been a better place if Hitler would have had his way. You know, he wanted to send the Jews to Madagascar, and, uh, and then uh, we never would have had the Cold War, and uh, Germany never would have been divided. And Europe would not have that problem with all those Muslims there now. It's just like, uh, you know, what happened? Is somebody trying to destroy civilization or something? Yeah. It's like, uh, this is a really good book here. And I, I was going to talk about it, The Poison Mushroom. This was the little book that the uh, German children were brought up on. And it's really scary, some of the stuff in here. In fact, they have a story about Jewish lawyers in here. And, uh, let's see, yeah, I think, I don't know if I have a link to this on my website or not, but it's no wonder they had to get rid of uh, Hitler, you know, he's teaching, his, teaching the children over there all this stuff. But, uh, you know, these, uh, it's like nobody wanted the Jews, they didn't want them, that's what they called, uh, they called it the the Jewish problem, and, and Karl Marx wrote something about it. But anyway, I gotta get going. God bless, peace and love. Bye.